Hi. Ciao. Hello everyone. Ciao a tutti. Good afternoon and welcome in Finland. Buonasera e benvenuti in Finlandia. I'm Mirja. Io sono Mirja. And today I'm your happiness guide here in Finland. I started cycling when I was about five. It's quite typical uh, age. When I was a kid, cycling for me, I was cycling just for fun. It was a new skill to learn. When I was a teenager, it had another meaning. It was freedom. I could go wherever and whenever. I wasn't born here in Helsinki and we didn't have so good public transport in the place where I was. But cycling was the way to go out, meet friends, as I told you, whenever and wherever. Now, when I'm adult, cycling means a lot of more for me. First, it's commuting. I'm cycling everywhere, all the year round, to the work, to shopping, to theater. It's also welfare, it's my social life, and the way to see new places. I've been cycling with this, my bicycle, one of them. She's Kameli Camel, because she's bringing me all around Europe. I've been cycling with her from Helsinki to Belgium, and also from Helsinki to Italy. For example, for vis visitors, uh, there's many possibilities to have a cycle in Finland. You can have a rental bike, and you, we have also a very good town bike system in many towns. In Helsinki, I think more than 10 towns in Finland has nowadays these city, bu city bikes. And you can rent whatever bike you like. You can rent a mountain bike, fat bike, gravel bike, road bike, an ordinary bicycle, whatever you need. And we have a lot of nice roads to cycle all around in Finland. Now we are going to do a short walk in the forest. We do it my way. Some people call it sensory walk because we are going to use our all five senses one by one. The idea behind the sensory walk is that we concentrate and we see and notice all the small things around us. All the things that can make us happy. So, if you are now sitting somewhere, I ask you to stand up. You can't walk if you are sitting. You can do this wherever you are, at your home, or if you have a park near your house, go there. Actually, last February, I did this in some museums in Italy. It helps me to concentrate on the place where I am. So please stand up and first try to reach the sky. It feels good. And when we take our first steps, we do it very slowly. This is our private time. This is your private time. You can take this just to relax. And now feel the ground or the floor under your feet. Walk slowly. I'm quite happy I can do this here in this forest. I think we can start with our ears. I can listen. I can listen. And I can hear something that makes me smile. Something that makes me happy. And it helps if you close your eyes. We are so visual persons and we get all the time so much visual stimulus that it helps us to concentrate on hearing if we close our uh, eyes. 
you can listen maybe the same what I'm hearing now or you can listen what you hear in your house if you are there. You can open the window and now have a moment just listening. This is so amazing way to be happy without doing nothing. It's amazing to hear these birds here. Children walking over there. And I can hear they are quite happy. Try this wherever you are. Just listen what you can hear around you. For me, the forest is the best place. But maybe you enjoy other kind of places. But then we can also use some other senses. Maybe we can smell. I'm here in forest and it's easy for me to try things to smell. If you are in your home, you can surprise yourself. Take some very ordinary things from your house and check how they are smelling. You may surprise because every piece has a specific smell. Oh, we can find blueberries here. Now they are flowering, but on June you will have here amazing blueberries just to pick up and eat. Also the flowers are quite sweet. And strawberries will be there. Finnish summer is so beautiful, it's so short and everything in the nature is growing so quickly. They must because the winter is coming so soon. The growing period is short and it's amazing. Every year I wonder how everything is coming up here after the winter. But maybe we now have an exercise with our skin. And we can feel something with the cheek. So if you are there at home, maybe you can open the window if you don't already have opened that. And you can feel what is the temperature outside. Is it different from the room you are? Warmer or colder? Is there any wind? Try to find from your place, wherever you are now, something very smooth. Something very smooth. What could it be here? Maybe this leaf? Oh yes. This makes me smile. Did you find something smooth? When you are using your senses one by one, you can feel more, you can see more, you can hear more. And as I told you, you can do this everywhere, wherever you are. When you need to concentrate, you need to call calm. But now I think we can go further. I'm going to do some craft with you. Craft, crafting is something Finns are doing a lot. And today we are going to do something very ordinary. Something very 
EEC, but something very special and important. I have here an old milk carton and we are going to build uh, an insect hotel. Insect hotel is a place where insects can go. Pollinators has problems because they need old wood where they can stay and if pollinators are leaving us they are taking us with them. They are very important and we are doing some shelter for pollinators and we are using only recycling materials and na nature materials. And I have collected things around here, everything I found a little bit beforehand. And the main idea for this insect hotel is the holes. Insect needs holes where they can go. They can have their nest there and they can, can stay there during the winter times. Of course, different kind of holes. It depends what kind of insects you have in your area. I will cut a little bit away so that if it's raining, everything doesn't become wet. And then I just start to fill it with the things where the insects can go. And to make holes, I have also some... Oh, this is beautiful. I love this. This is from birch. Do you know what is duohi in English? I don't know the word. But you know the cover. Never take this from the tree. Just collect them from the ground. That's the point. And I can do. Maybe I first should fill this little bit. This is so big. I drink a lot of milk with my coffee and this is why we buy big milk cans. Knots. Moss is amazing material. Yes. They can do their own holes here. I put some moss here. Moss, knots, old wood. And then I will do this. Oh, this is a treasure. <laughs> Look what I found. It, was, it has been a bird nest. I didn't take it from the tree, no, but it was fallen down and I took it with me because this is amazing material for the insect hotel. As you see, the forest is full of dresses. Just have a walk and pick up things. And small holes for different holes for different types of insects. How do you like it? Then we can hang it to the tree, put it in the garden and maybe someone will find a place to stay. In Finland it's amazing that you can pick up everything from the nature. You can pick up berries, mushrooms and it doesn't matter who is the owner of the forest. Everything is free for everyone. My Italian friends are wondering that can you pick up as much mushrooms as you can? Yes, and it's free. And it's for everyone, not only for us Finns. I am very proud of that. I'm staying now here in the forest, but you can go and meet my friend Molla. And as I told you, She's teaching us some croqueting. That will be interesting.
Moi! My name is Mola Mills and uh, I'm your next virtual happiness guide. So you went to the forest with Miria and we are just coming back from there and we are actually visiting my tiny work studio at the moment. So the studio is located in an old house. We are actually inside of an old school from 1920s. And uh, it's pretty nice to be here. As you see, I have quite a lot of yarn. So my work is related to yarn. Uh, I write books about crochet and I teach. I've been teaching some years, maybe like, I don't know, 10, 10 years about. I, I teach workshops all over the world for you, how to, how to do crochet, like really basic stitches, what we're going to be making today as well. But how I, how I found my happiness, what makes, what makes um, my, my happiness real and why I want to talk about it for you, it's simple. So when you do crafts, your mind is focused and you are right there. Your stress levels go down and your mind is, maybe you're finding some balance in it, I think, at least, at least I find even though I've been doing this for my living for long enough to, to, want, to want to change the career, but I still want to do this and I love teaching and I would love to meet you face to face. I don't know where you are. It would be so nice to know where you are watching this as we are here in this tiny studio, but you might be anywhere in the world. Well, that's pretty exciting. And uh, how I started, well, first of all, how I, how I started building my life with, uh, with this DIY style. I come from a family of crafters. So my mom, I think at the moment she's doing macrame, but she's been doing like all the possible crafts you can imagine. She's making soap and we have a house full of soap. Um, she's making a lot of um, different types of crafts. And my dad, he's a carpenter. I will show you a picture of my dad later on. He is he was modeling for one of my books. But so I come I come from a family of hardcore crafters and I got it as well. So so I do crafts all the time, 24-7. Well maybe not 24-7, but you know, I've been doing this since I was a very little girl. So for me, this what you see here is like a base of a base of my happiness. I always feel really calm and relaxed when I have yarn in my hands and um, I get really inspired by all kinds of like new, new textures. So I, I, I get excited when I touch, touch materials. Maybe that's the same with you as well if you do any crafts. It doesn't have to be crochet or like any kind of yarn related work. You just get like inspired when you when you when you sense that that this is your material my I, I thought mine would be wood i actually i have some some wood stuff here i want to show you something is coming out as well so uh, sometimes i instead of a crochet hook i take a knife and i start uh, whittling some crochet hooks sometimes we do some wood works with my dad and it's, it's always so nice so, so my story as, as, a, as a craft book author started when I was, I was already like 30 plus something. I was in a university. I was doing my master's degree in art. So I was, you know, I always had my work. Where it was like lectures, any kind of studies. I always had my work like under the table. The teacher was saying something and I was like, mm-hmm, nah -hmm, yep, yep. I always had my hands on work. So for me, it was like a natural way of learning. And I think it's, it's also like they, they did some research as well about like manual learning. So you have, you have something in your hands while you, you, while you listen to something. So you kind of, you kind of, the information kind of like, I don't know how to say it, but you just, you just, you just soak into the information a lot better when you have something in your hands. And I think this is really exciting because when I went to school, my teacher was always like, no craft here. So I was always trying to, you know, keep my hands busy so that I could, so my mind wouldn't start traveling. So I would be focused when I have my hands on work, you know, it's a funny thing, but now I do it for my living and I always want to 
encourage people to, you know, if you want to, if, if you have restless hands or if your mind is wandering, I think it's really nice to have something in your hands that you just, you know, focus. You can focus differently with your hands and with your mind. So, yeah. So, so about my, about my, about my books, how I started, I think I went quite far from the topic. So I was in a university and I was always doing this under the table and it took a while when my teacher Beza, he noticed that damn, she's always, she's always doing that. So he basically, he, he approached me, it was, I think we were in the middle of some project and he was, he came to me and he was like, Mala, don't you think you could do something, you know, bigger with this crochet? I was thinking like, well, it's kind of my hobby. I don't know if I'm able to take it to the next level. It's always been my hobby. So I started thinking when Vesa was kind of inspiring me to, to think outside of my yarn box, you know? So, so because Vesa was like, he was, he put this seed in my mind that I could do something bigger with this tiny skill of mine. Back then I thought it's just like a tiny skill or a tiny hobby. So I started, I started slowly thinking, what could it be? What could I do with it? Uh, and then I started like, I started crocheting with thicker yarns, with, with bigger projects. And eventually, eventually um, I graduated and I made my first book as my thesis. So it was, it all started because one person was encouraging me to, uh, to step outside and look, look at your, your skills from outside. He saw that in me. So, so I don't know. Vesa, if you are there, thank you. <laughs> so it's awesome. And this is how I love, this is the, when I teach, I always try to encourage as well that it's, it's not only handicraft what we do, it's not only crochet. There's been a lot of people who actually ask like, so what do you do for real? Like, what's your real profession? I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? Am I supposed to do something else? This actually consumes my my whole time. I'm just, I'm just crafting and nowadays I'm really proud that I'm only crafting, but I'm taking th this to the next level. So I'm writing my sixth book. I have 11 uh, translations. So this became my work. Um, it started as my small hobby and then it just, then it just grew bigger and bigger. And now, well, this is, this is, this is me. So our tool is as simple as this. Maybe, maybe I'll show you a little bit bigger so you see that this one here. Simple tools, no rules. That's like, that's the whole logic in, in crafts. You can express yourself freely. And I think when it comes to crafting, that's the whole idea. Like self-expression, you can put yourself on the canvas so-called. You can, you, can, you can create art with simple tools and yarn. This, this is called Pohjanmaa. So Pohjanmaa is the place where I'm from. Kurikka, my hometown, is in the south part of Pohjanmaa. And this one here, it's kind of old. I've been using, I've been wearing it everywhere. I call it my travel, traveling bag. So if you know anything about Pohjanmaa area, we have this like traditional symbol, salmiakki. Salmiakki is also a Finnish candy. I don't know if you ever tasted it. Some people once tasted it and never again. But for us, it's like, it's like delicacy. So salmiakki is like super salty, hard, like, um, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, how to describe, describe it, but it's just like black candy. So this, this shape here is salmiakki. You can also find salmiakki in our um, traditional sweater. So it's, it's like in the yoke here, you can knit it or you can buy them ready-made. So it goes like, the pattern goes here and it's with the same salmiakki symbol. I kind of, I, I, I like it so much and I wanted to bring it to this work. The Finnish nature does inspire me, like this one here, it's very much inspired by our country. I have a tiny, tiny, um, like a real life sample for you, what we are going to be crocheting today. So this in Finnish, this is called Tähkä. 
And Tahka is like, I don't know what this is like. Does it have like a particular English word? I think it's just called ear of the wheat or something like the top part of any kind of wheat. I think this is like oats, um, I guess. We just call it Tahka. So this is what this is. This was definitely inspired by by my country. If you want to make the pattern at home, you can find this pattern in English in rentafin.com website. I don't know how long it will be there, so go there, print it, so you can, you can make it as well. It's simple. So the stitches we are using here, it's called double crochet stitch. Since we, we, we have different terminology in, in Britain and in American, I think I'm using the American, I always call it double stitch. In Spanish, punto alto. That's the, that's the basic stitch what we are. We are creating the whole work with the same stitch. And the idea of tapestry crochet, tapestry crochet is multicolor texture. We are using two yarns. And if you take a look at the work inside, there is no yarn loops whatsoever. So what you do, you carry the yarn inside of the stitch from the beginning all the way to the end. So how you work, how you, how you start the work when you have multiple yarns is that you have them all. I'm, I'm right-handed as you can see. So I hold the work and the hook with my, with my right hand and I hold the yarns with my, with, with my left hand. I always hold all of the yarns here between my fingers like this. I squeeze them, I split the yarns with my index finger and I start the work. To do, to, to make vareta, punto alto, um, double stitch. Oh, and finish this is called pulvas. So when you do pulvas, you take one yarn over and you put the hook through the next stitch. I've already done this. It's, it, this, uh, this took me maybe like three evenings when I was, when I, st I started from the, from the bottom and I went here. I've, I've, I've made like a few of these works. So this sample took me about three evenings maybe like, I don't know, six hours, six, seven hours, with really slow crochet. And you know, that's one of the things in crochet, it can be really slow. If you can see, half of the work is full of these kinds of bubbles. So this is called popcorn, popcorn stitch. If you forget how to do it, just, just Google it and you'll find a lot of videos. So each and every one of these tahka patterns has one popcorn here, another popcorn there, another set of popcorns on top of them, on top of them, on top of them, and just one in the top. So this stitch is always made the same way. Basically, you collect five um, double stitches, visi pulvasta, five is visi. So you collect them all together. You start from the same, same uh, place and you make. Now I've got number three going there, number four, so how you do the popcorn stitch is that you collect all of these five stitches together. You take the hook out of the work, put the hook through the first one and put the hook through the tiny loop you left there and just pull them together. So this creates a stitch called popcorn. There's a lot of different stitches in crochet worlds and uh, I, I don't even know half of them. I just use I just use double stitch. It's my favorite stitch. Like most of my works are made with the with the same stitch. It's easy. Well, 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 well. There is like finished design. It's it's really varied. Mm. We have we have a lot of it. We are really famous for the uh, for the uh, design. Anyway, I think Finland is if it, well. We all know that finished design is really high quality. It's usually made out of some Finnish material and the designers are usually really creative and practical. So I would describe Finnish design practical the most. It's always long lasting. So if you buy anything that comes from Finland, it will last uh, many lifetimes, I think. Thank you for visiting my studio. You're always welcome back. All right, moikka. <laughs>